This is Joseph Coco. I'm at A2 PATH 2016 on behalf of Becky Holborn's Art Process Blog. If you could introduce yourself, Zach. I'm um, Zach Gorman. Okay. <laughs> and what brings you to A2 PATH this year? Uh, I'm actually Ann Arbor local, so it's an easy show to do. Um, Fantastic. But yeah, I sell in my books. I, uh, some Rick and Mortys and some costume quests and various other books I've done over the last couple of years. Cool. And um, what's, your, what's your latest book, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, the most recent thing is probably volume two of the Rick and Morty trade that I wrote. It's my last it's issue six through ten in the series, uh, and that's represents the end of it. I quit after issue ten, just to got busy pursuing other things. That's actually a guest issue. We had Andrew McLean come in and do the art, who's doing the book Headlopper for Image Comics right now, and is amazing. Sure. And I'm sorry, you were the writer on Rick Yeah, I wrote the first ten issues of the comic series. Okay. And what was your experience with that? Were you working uh, closely with the uh, with the um, uh, animation studio, or did they kind of just give you free reign? It was it was actually I, I guess all the scripts we sent in were approved by Justin and I think Dan Harmon. Although I think Justin told me that Dan uh, didn't even see a lot of them. I, he probably had other things to do. But <laughs> and Justin Worland had to give a thumbs up to all the scripts. And uh, yeah, but other than that, like I, we never had anything. Uh, we never. Had him send anything back or give anything note any notes. He kind of just let me do whatever I wanted with it, which was really yeah. cool. Well, I assume you're a fan of the show, so you probably knew about what they were what they were looking for. Yeah, and when, I, and when I pitched it, I pitched it as uh, give him a bunch of blurbs for ten to twelve episodes. I don't remember exactly how many. And kind of said, all right, listen, these are my ideas for episodes slash issues, I should say. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, just little self-contained things like I was writing, you know, like a Netflix little blurb about the episode. Yeah. Uh, and th they saw those, and then they hired me to do it. So um, I actually hadn't even written, like, a, scr a spec script or anything when they gave me the job. It was just, oh, wow. it was just blurbs. It was just those little ideas. Yeah. And I, I had worked with Oni before like, on Costume Quest. Okay, so in, uh, you were 2014, so unofficially vetted, basically. Yeah, so they knew yeah. me, and they knew my work, and so that, that was how I ended up doing it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you submitted that directly to the creators or they put out an all call how did they do yeah, yeah I, uh, like I was contacted by Oni um, and then <laughs> sent uh, sent the, the blurbs over to them and then they sent them they forward, sent them over to Justin and stuff and uh, that was kind of it so yeah. and um, how many how many times have you been to A2CAP formerly Kids Read Comics uh, this is my second year so I was here last year and uh, I'm actually since I'm local now, it's kind of this is actually the only show I'm doing this year. So. Oh wow! <laughs> because I live ten minutes away, and I got really lazy, and I kind of wanted a year off from doing shows. I've been busy with tied up with a lot of other projects. Especially if you're having to travel to get a show, it can be pretty exhausting, and it takes away from your ability to produce comics. Yeah, I miss I miss seeing the friends I make at shows, but uh, I like the it's a nice break. It's a much needed break, I think. Yeah, and everyone always talks about, or artists anyway, talk about in general that they wish that there was social events that <laughs> artists could go to yeah, you know, and I, would be centralized I'm, I'm like, but wouldn't cost a whole lot of money yeah. and like no pressure to sell or anything you can just kind of hang out yeah so, I, actually, I did an artist retreat this year which was kind of that oh it really i mean it was it was a flight i, I flew out to uh so it wasn't cheap but i had to fly out to oregon for it but it was a bunch of west yeah. coast artists and so just got like a house just did about a got back from that like a week and a half ago and just we spent a week out there and just Whoa. hanging out and, that must be hard uh, nice so you're actually talking living about work but not doing any work no Living one did the no dream. one did any work it was fantastic <laughs> <laughs> well, I shouldn't I mean, say that maybe some of the maybe some other people snuck in work I didn't do any work it sounds like it's about a refresher really yeah. rather than a, a work party I, think, I mean yeah and I think that's like a good model um, because again you only see the people you know, a lot of people work scattered out across the country or countries because a lot of people yeah, so work actually you cross paths every couple of years or so and then it's only at shows and then it's yeah. kind of everyone's like a little bit tired and burnt out and yeah. um, what ice cream. so and it's, it's whether nice or not you feel like organizing something after the show is like depends yeah. on how the day went. Yeah, so it's nice to like it's nice just to get together with other like creatives and stuff and just hang oh out. Oh my gosh. Sure. And how did you hear about that? The, uh, it was actually organized retreat. by uh, yeah. it was organized by Joy Ang uh, from Adventure Time and she uh, nice. 
Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. a good organizer and puts th these things together every year pretty much. So Yeah. And you know it's not just going to be um, left open-ended. So. Yeah. I mean, she has a whole plan. Uh, her and Kim Smith, who's another really talented illustrator, and they, they, they organize these things. So, yeah. Like, I'm bad at organizing, so. And um, what was your experience working with uh, Costume Quest? You're the artist and the writer for this? Yes, for the book. Yeah, I, I wrote and drew the book. Uh, it was a really short turnaround window. I did it in about a month and a half, two months, and um, it, it started. It's all digital. Yeah, it was all digital. I worked entirely in Manga Studio. I may have done some color correction, Photoshop, and I think that was it. Uh, it started as a small project that they kind of just wanted to do a promotional tie-in for the second game when the second game was coming out, and uh, I sort of leveraged it into convincing them to do a bigger book that is more of a standalone. Same amount of time. Yeah. But, I, but, I, but the wind, yeah, the time didn't change. So it was like, well, instead of doing 20 pages, you're now doing 50 pages. Uh, but it worked out, and I was glad I did it. It was a good experience, and it was nice to know that it was possible to do a book in that time. Yeah. So Costume Quest has started a little bit more at kids, whereas Rick and Morty is maybe more teenagers or adults. Um, yeah. Would you consider yourself, uh, like, would you consider your demographic more uh, the younger audience or teens? Uh, well, I just wrote a book that is aimed at a sort of mid-grade audience, so sure. younger, um, but I don't know, I guess I tend to mostly work for a younger audience, but I don't really see myself that way. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, it's not really so much about censoring or changing the way that I would work. It's just about, um, younger people can appreciate it as I guess, well. I guess, yeah, I guess whoever the publisher thinks it's appropriate for, and sometimes I think it just tends, I tend to skew a little younger. Yeah, uh, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes Sometimes it's really an artificial boundary of like who would this sell best to, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. I think I've kind of like that Jim Henson complex yeah, yeah, where yeah. I, may, I mostly make stuff for kids, but I never want to feel like I'm just making stuff for kids. Yeah. You know? Like it's it always to me it's not really just for kids. It's for just kind of anyone. But yeah. but I guess I don't put a lot of like, like swearing or sex in it, so I guess it's like it's like kid stuff. So yeah. I mean, that's the way that's some the people difference. would see it. That's the difference. Is like I don't I don't write any different. I just you know I, I don't put in, you know, offensive things. Like right. This. Well, I mean, that's the way kid property should be approached, I would argue. It's just um, something that can be appreciated by adults, and that's where the term all ages comes from. It's something that can be appreciated by adults, but doesn't necessarily have as heavy drama as something that is for adults. Yeah, and Rick and Morty was kind of uh, a little bit of like a... Rick and Morty's a little bit strange because the comic, I actually think, is a little was a little heavier um, censored than the TV show. Like, the TV show had sure. clearly like a little bit of an older age range but because of how the licensing deal, we were actually um, running it through like Cartoon Network. Like, uh, so it was getting approved by people at Cartoon Network, not at Adult Swim, which has a little bit different sensibilities. And some of the jokes were put in, I think they were like, well, you can't do that. And we were like, but have you seen the show, right? Like, yeah, you know I mean, anyone, show. anyone, I mean, a lot of people, <laughs> I, I assume people who pick up the comic are at least pa in passing familiar yeah, with the show. I know, I know. And they might know that. Yeah, but I, I thought we ran into some, some sort of censorship issues that the show never would have, which is right. interesting to be in that position. And it was small things. It was, um, you know, things that looked too phallic. This, <laughs> they were like, no, you can't do that. Okay, there's, well. there's nothing particularly adult about Rick and Morty, but there are some, some deep things. I mean, the, the sex robot yeah. episode is yeah, I mean, probably not that appropriate yeah. for yeah. kids. Uh, and the fact that Rick and Morty have died multiple times, I believe. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty violent. It's a little dark. But also, I think it's... I I think it's the other stuff more than the violence because like yeah. you can get away with because of how backwards everyone is you can get away with a lot of violence <laughs> and still make it a kid's thing but as soon as you put anything yeah well, America's like the opposite of Europe like, yeah, yeah. like a little bit of titillation is okay in Europe but no violence for kids yeah in America it's like violence is great but no yeah. no titillation you can have the heads exploding that's fine yeah <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little weird but okay and what brought you to Ann Arbor uh, just as a comic artist did you move for personal reasons or professional moved here with reasons? my wife, yeah. Like she, we actually. I mean, we grew up in uh, in the area. We grew up in uh, Dearborn, Michigan, and. 
Yeah, lived in Chicago for a while, and we just moved around for her work, really. That's it. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, Becca can uh, commiserate with that. We, we actually moved to Nashville for my work, so it's not exactly the best comics hub. But. Yeah, I mean, we moved back here because we, we love we love the city, too. So, uh, so you know, we, we wanted to move. I mean, we wanted to move here. Yeah, we grew up in Dearborn, and moved, which is, you know, like 30 minutes away, 30, 40 minutes away, depending on traffic. Uh, and so, so she actually did her undergrad here, so we were familiar with the city. I have never lived here before this year, but um, yeah, always I knew I liked it. And we were, you know, when we were moving back to Michigan, it was kind of this seemed like kind of the perfect place for us. So, uh, can you tell me a little bit about Magic Game Time? What the inspiration behind that is? It looks like it's a compilation of um, some fan art from series that you personally enjoy. Yeah, it, it actually just started as um, kind of where it all got started was I just did a couple video game sort of web comic. Strips and people really liked them, so I made more, and that's kind of all there is to it, really. It was like I had done some as an experiment. Uh, some of it initially was to play with, uh, I wanted familiar subject matter to play with working animated GIFs into comics just to see how that would work. So I was like, well, sure, I'll just draw some Zelda stuff because it seems fun, like, right? I'm, it's yeah. something I'd always like really loved, and no, that part is very genuine, like, I really love it, hence the Triforce tattoo on my arm. Yeah, I love Zelda, don't get me wrong, but it Are you was excited really about the, it was the new one. That got announced. I am. Yeah. I am. I think it looks great. Not to derail the conversation. No, no. I'm it's, sorry. Continue. But but yeah, it was. It, there was no like. Or there was no plan to it. I just started doing them, and people liked them, so I did more. And I did. Yeah. And I did, and I did it, more it until happened its way into a book. <laughs> yeah, I did more until I had enough to oh, fill a book, and then I had well, already kind of moved on a little here. bit. So, um, and then you know, I mean, I still think I would like. It still seems like a fun thing to go back and do once in a while, but uh, I just moved on to sort of bigger projects, uh, like longer format stuff, and then that, that's kind of like took over. All my I'm like really easily bored and distracted, and I just move on like really quickly, which is why yeah. I have a lot of unfinished web comics and unfinished yeah. projects. It's because like it's well, hard. Something that's a little episodic, like uh, magical game time, is probably ideal for you then, where uh, yeah. it, it stays a little fresh, and when you're done with it, you can just be done with it. Yeah, and I always like I always really liked comic strips. Like, yeah, I grew up. I, I was introduced to comic strips before books. Web really, comics. I mean, like I, I remember like really falling in love with comic strips when I was like a real, real little kid. Okay, like uh, newspaper. Things? Calvin and Hobbes or, and stuff, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and so, that was, so that was always kind of like what I wanted to do. That was the first thing I wanted to do in comics, was comic strips. Yeah. And so it's like a natural medium for me. Whereas, like, I actually find it challenging to, like, work in longer formats just because I'm a little impatient. Like, I just want things to be done. And so working on a book, which is actually why, probably why it's a good reason that I only had a month and a half, two months to write that book. Yeah. Because if I had, had longer, I probably would, would have I wouldn't have used the space. Yeah. Like, I, I need to be on a schedule because I need to just get it done. Sure. On. And is that something that your your editors are accounting for? Uh, no. Like, do they I mean, know that they have to drive you hard, or no, it's just like just meet the deadline and yeah, we'll be happy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, was, I, I mean, Becca doesn't personally work with an, edit, an editor. She would like to, but so I didn't know how much editors accommodated individual artists and writers versus just kind of saying, well, whatever works for you. We just want the final product. Yeah, I don't really know. I guess I'm kind of sheltered from it because that's uh, if if I do have editors that think that way, they don't tell me. So, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, and finally, would you? Um, well, not quite finally. Uh, where can we find your work online? Um, well, actually, my website, my personal website, has been down for a while. I am proud of remodeling it. But on Twitter, at Zach, Zach Gormania, uh, Zach Gorman with an IA at the end, uh, or uh, MagicalGameTime.com. It's so I don't update it really, but it's still there and it's still a place to read the webcomics. So. Okay. And finally, would you have any advice to artists who are considering attending A2CAF for the first time? Uh, tabling at A2K? Uh, well, don't overbring books. <laughs> okay. It's a, it's a, it, the, the show is a large population, of, a large demographic here are kids, and so you don't yeah. tend to sell as much, but it's really nice to see kids reading your stuff. And yeah, it's definitely. Like, it's a really good feeling. It, it's so hard like to get kids. the attention of kids at other independent <laughs> comic conventions, because yeah. a lot of them are... Um, to be frank, like hipsters that are yeah. uh, roughly our age who appreciate comics, but they, yeah. they might look at our things and say, well, that's not Autobio. I don't want to read that. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's a great show for kids, yeah. and I really like, I really appreciate that aspect of it. And that's why, that's aside from living here, that's why I like the show and support the show, is because I think it's really good to get kids into comics. So. Okay, well, we appreciate your advice. Uh, I hope you have a good A2CAF. Thanks for talking to me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.